Wow, it's Terrence Gangster Williams, aka OG Giggity. Yo, we're gonna get into these crooked cops in New Orleans. I'm gonna talk about Lynn Davis, aka Pretty Lynn. Lynn Davis was uh, charged with some more officers uh, for protecting a warehouse that they thought had uh, a lot of drugs and kilos of cocaine in it. But currently he's on death row for ordering a hit, for ordering a crackhead to be killed. Uh, someone that smoked crack at one time or whatever. Um, what happened, The Lynn David was like one of those cops, you know, that come around, shake up a few things, shake up a few people. And this particular woman, he shook her up. She went, made a complaint on him. So he goes to these other two guys, allegedly, and um, wanted the guy to uh, take a hit to kill her because she had complained to uh, whatever those authorities, the people that you go complain when the police do uh, corruption. He didn't take that too well. So unbeknownst to him, his phone was tapped. And then they had the, uh, the, ho the hotel where he would hang out at um, was, was also wired up or tapped. Or something but um all this stuff you can google this stuff but the reason why I'm speaking on Lynn David because I got a chance to meet him while we both was on maximum security together and uh, he learned the law he learned the law he started representing himself to fight the uh, the murder case the murder charge he was uh, charged with but anyway um also uh, he uh Supposed, allegedly contact this hitman that was from out the Calio project named Paul Hardy and Paul Hardy allegedly uh, was pulled the trigger they went to trial behind this uh, Damon Williams was a cool guy got the chance to meet him uh, at court one day uh, he have a life sentence Paul Hardy had a, had the death penalty but he was able to get a death penalty back and he received a life sentence while Lim Davis is still on death row as we right now as we speak. Um, the story went that Lynn kept trying to find her, kept trying to find her, kept trying to find her. So somebody let him know that she was around at the time. He found out she was on the corner. He described the cut of clothes she had on. And uh, he said, man, go around and get the B right now. Go get her, go get her. She said, she around on the corner now. So... Uh, allegedly, his hitman, his hitman, went around there, killed her. But the feds was listening on the call, and the reason why the feds was listening on the call, like I say, he was hired along with some other uh, crooked officers in our city to protect a warehouse that he thought uh, had a lot of drugs in it. So they would actually sit outside this warehouse, posted up, protecting something that wasn't in there. <laughs> Yo. He was actually paid, and I asked him, so what? He said, man, what my job to go in and look at it. I was just getting paid to watch a warehouse. I didn't know what was in there. I wasn't told all that. I was hooked up by some of them other guys, and I, was, I had my shift. So we had shifts we would do. It's like, oh, all right. So like I say, the feds had him, his phone tap for that. The feds was on to him for protecting this, uh, this, uh, this uh, supposedly uh, uh, dr this warehouse with drugs in it, whereas while he was still living his police life and doing other things they caught up with him with the murder he got caught up with the murder because his phone was tapped and they listened in and when he got the call that the lady was dead his exact words were rock by baby all this is all this that I'm telling you all is in court documents so you can all go look it up his name is Lynn Davis uh, I think it's case back in 94 uh, like I say uh, he had he got a chance he got the death penalty overturned uh, he had came back to court and that's when I had met him, when I had got locked up out of feds, when we was on max security, you know, we had us all in individual cell, but he would come out, we would talk, and um, he used to start studying that law, was, you know, was fighting, you know, and like I say, uh, but he's still on death row. His co-defendant, Damon, uh, Damien, whatever, and he's a good dude, man, laid back dude. He uh, received a life sentence for it. And, um, you know, I had spoke with him, and he was like, he didn't know what was going on? He just said, God has asked for a ride. 
he didn't know what was going on, so, you know, he on the innocent uh, road, you know? And, you know, a lot of times people get caught up like that. I don't uh, know the whole situation with them, and I don't want to say this, this, and this, and then you be like, man, I'm trying to file a appeal to this, whatever the case may be. But I just know a lot of this stuff I'm talking to you all about is already public records where you can pull it up and you can look at it yourself. But uh, like I said, and the reason why I'm speaking on it because I got a chance to meet uh, Damone and I got a chance and I was on, on a tier on Max Security with Lynn Davis, the, the police officer. Uh, and uh, I got a chance to talk with him. And, uh, you know, he used to tell me different little things, how the police stuff worked and, you know, uh, you know what, what was all going on because I know he was he had a situation where uh, there's a guy at the night ward was breaking in houses and Lynn got behind him shot him in the leg and he kept running you know he hid he in the alley got up on the house and he died from internal bleeding so it's a lot of stuff that uh, surrounded this officer here with guys that uh, he did or got a license in, 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 in Angola because uh, Lynn used to be terrorizing that night ward but um I like got his co-defendant, uh, Paul Hardy. Paul Hardy, yeah, that's the brother. Paul Hardy, uh, who, who, who was on the case with him, who had the death penalty. Uh, you know, he did the crazy role. They found out that he, he was insane, so they took the death penalty off him and gave him a life sentence. Uh, currently, he's in one of those USPs uh, with a life sentence for the murder. Like I say, I don't know, you know, if he's the one who really pulled the trick. I just know they got him charged with it. He went to trial. You know, they got evidence, him talking to Lynn or whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah, that's what that's, that, that's what happened back in the 90s. You know, we have a, a few situations where the cops, you know, did a lot of crooked, cutthroat stuff. So they supposed to be protected and serving. And yet, they they was wilding too, you know what I'm saying? They was, they was steppers, you know what I'm saying? Because I used to always say that. Um, like the police I spoke about with, uh, with, with Richard Pena's situation, I used to always say if a police had pulled, got behind me to pull me over, I was never going to stop on a, a dog street or back street. I was going to keep going till I went to a Popeye's or somewhere where they had light at, where people going to see and I'm jumping on the phone, hey, police you pulled me over this where I'm at, da da da, because I knew how dirty and cutthroat they were playing, you know, because there was another situation um, where the police had blocked off a street. And uh, this big drug kingpin had to squash a beef. That's something. That's something for uh, another time. I know y'all want that, but uh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I was just driving, man. I had to pull over and jump out and, and, and come get y'all. This it was. I was like, oh, you know. So I got a nice little setting. I like the little. He did. So, uh, but y'all know the motto, man. Say no to drugs. Stop the violence. Put the guns down. Uh, much love. Thank y'all for hanging out. Thank you all for supporting me. And uh, you know, I'm gonna be. Reaching out to a few other little hood steppers or whatever we can get going on on here, you know. And um, like I said, once I reach that uh, 100,000 subscriber, I'll we'll be giving away some more money, y'all. It's gonna be my way of giving back again. I'm out. One.